Testify to us, O God, by the voice of your Spirit. Put your law in our hearts, write your word in our minds, and show your will in our lives, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 34. That's on page 7 and 8 of the New Testament in your pew Bible. It is also on the screen, and I'd like to invite you to join me in reading. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, not Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fifty-three weeks ago, I counted, 53 weeks ago at our last annual congregational meeting, our elders asked you about Covenant's life together. And we will ask you similar questions in new ways this year because these conversations are part of our shared work of discerning God's will for the church together. So our elders listened and they took notes and the session reflected on your responses to those questions and we found three clusters of topics where God seemed to be calling to Covenant Presbyterian Church. And so we found a cluster around fellowship, this desire to nurture the uh, connections and relationships within the congregation that felt especially important as uh, we have been re-knitting the community in this post-COVID reality. We found a cluster around stewardship, especially stewardship in terms of focusing our efforts more tightly on the things that are really, truly meaningful for the life of this congregation. And we found a cluster around mission, 
both mission in the sense of getting out in the community to serve, but also becoming even more inviting to gather others into Christ's mission here in this congregation. Now, there is more about those three areas in my written report. That's pages six and seven of your packet. Uh, and you've had a chance to read that, and it's nobody's job to read reports to us today. The job of this time, this report slash sermon, is both to proclaim the gospel and also to frame our conversation as we move into some new questions or newly framed questions this year. So conveniently, we already have a sermon, we just read part of it together. Jesus has been preaching to us, and this Sermon on the Mount lays out the fullness of God's intention for human life in Jesus Christ. And so just before the part that we read, Jesus spent some time discussing prayer and fasting and charity. All of these are vis visible, tangible practices, but Jesus reminds us that we have to do these not in order to be seen and recognized by humans. We do these for God, for our relationship with God. And more generally, Jesus is trying to reorient us, to try to reorient us from living in the ways that the world around us tells us to live and instead live according to the kingdom of heaven. We pray, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Now, heaven is not a place or a time. Heaven is a grounding. Heaven is a grounding in God's sovereign intention for human life. Heaven is what it looks like when God's will is done. Jesus preaches us a really hard sermon. That's why we only read little pieces of it at a time. This is Jesus at his most uncompromising when he tells us you cannot serve both God and wealth because how we use our wealth tells us which God we are actually serving. And that's true for us as we reflect on our budget and our programs that what we choose and especially how we spend money tells us where our loyalty really lies. Jesus' original audience is a lot farther from wealth than we are. Most of their everyday lives were completely defined by a scarcity that we can hardly imagine living in the 21st century United States as we do. So we can't hide from that question of whether we serve God or wealth. We can't hide from that behind somebody else's budget numbers, whether we're talking about our budget numbers from a remembered past or an anticipated future or some other presumably larger congregation's budget numbers instead. Those numbers, numbers have a way about them of prompting comparison. That's what numbers do. Numbers are either bigger than or smaller than some other number. And that comparison has a way of calling for our service. That comparison has a way of demanding our loyalty. And that's why Jesus was talking about worry. He was talking about worry because no matter what your net worth is, no matter what your congregational meeting budget numbers show, Money has a way of demanding our loyalty, and it does that by leading us to worry about tomorrow. Human worry about tomorrow leads us away from God's intention for what tomorrow should look like. If Jesus says nothing else in what we just read, he says that our worry about tomorrow always leads us away from God's intention for what tomorrow actually ought to look like. And that includes in our plans as a church. And so we know about some important Christian practices. If this were just an ordinary talking to a bunch of individuals sermon, I would talk about some Christian practices that answer that lure of worry about tomorrow. I'd talk about practices like gratitude, Practices like giving beyond ourselves. Practices like realigning our focus away from those worries and putting our attention back on God. 
And when we talk about those practices, we might be talking about those three priority areas that you and the session identified 53 weeks ago at our annual congregational meeting last year. See, when I talk about gratitude, it sounds a little bit like our focus on fellowship, because fellowship is all about noticing who is here, who is actually present with us. How do we spend time together in a way that celebrates who we are and what we have? That's gratitude. We've been practicing gratitude this last year with gatherings around food and drink, and we know that there are more types of gatherings that we need. We have given particular attention this last year to hospitality for parents of kids who are here on Wednesday nights for Christian education, and we have been especially grateful for the relationships and connections that we've been able to nurture there. That practice of focusing our attention, choosing where our attention is going to go, well, that sounds kind of like this priority that we've articulated around stewardship, and particularly around focusing our work not on the things that are just a burden for the congregation, but focusing our efforts on the things that really matter. Because when we trim away what is less important, we have room to focus on what really matters. And so we've looked for ways to reduce some of the maintenance burdens we face, like yard work. We've looked for ways to help committee leadership step back when it is their time to say, I am done in this role, I'm ready for someone else to step in. And friends, we've been exploring how best to manage the old sanctuary, the one down the hall and to your left, a room that is relatively lightly used and quite expensive to heat, not only on days like today. And finally, that practice of giving that practice of giving, it sounds like our defining priority in this congregation around mission. And we are focusing right now on how do we make it easier to participate in mission with us? How do we make it easier to serve along with us? We care about this mission. We care about giving and serving because when we are honest, we know that we do have a wealth to share and more, we know that sharing makes us more wealthy. And so we are committed to inviting others to share along with us, including and especially at mission events. And we want to address barriers to that participation, whether it's questions about how do you RSVP to be part, uh, participant or these very chancel steps right here that make it hard to participate in certain ways. And we are working to expand the use of our building and our property to prioritize the use of community mission partners when it comes to scheduling and room usage exploring what it would mean to invite Head Start, which is operating at and beyond their capacity to use more of our building. Those conversations are at an early stage, but you should know that they're going on. And we're about to talk in even more depth because you didn't come to listen to me. We're about to talk in more depth in small groups about what we've been up to in this previous year, what we may be up to in this coming year, but this was just my first take at those three priorities of mission and stewardship and fellowship and how they relate to Jesus' sermon today. And so I pray that in all of our discernment we might seek and live out the kingdom of heaven.